my oldest son is uh, an engineer by trade. So he's a design engineer. So I let him borrow it for about a month and he really enjoyed it. He thought it worked well in his use case. It was different the way he used it than I would have used it. Uh, but to be honest, it's still small for me. And I think that's, um, we'll talk a little bit more about why later, but I think that depending on how you use the device and, you know, Kit kind of gave me a little bit of grief for this idea that the A5X is the best tablet ever. But uh, when we get into that, we can, we can kind of talk about why I said that. And I don't mean it's the best for everybody. So just as a caveat, I don't think that we're trying to say that this is the one device everyone can use, uh, but it's still the go-to device for me for writing in the way that I use these types of devices. I have given it away. It's not here. Mine won't be in this live stream. I've given it to my wife. It hasn't gone out of my household, but she's always been the A6X user in my household. So we'll talk a little bit about who the right size is for. Um, and we'll talk about why the SuperNote is the best device for Ed. And Ed and I are education professionals, and we'll talk a lot about um, you know why e-ink devices are really good for us um, in what we do. Why is it the one for you? And I wanted to ask you a question, Ed, to start with. I think it's a really interesting one where, where a lot of our viewers will be uh, at right now. And I was at this point... Uh, four years ago you were at this point and you were watching a lot of our channels and that's a really you know interesting thing as well what were the questions that you would have when you were thinking about buying an e-ink tablet tablet when you first wanted to buy an e-ink tablet what were you worried about what did you think that it would change and and then has it lived up to your expectations yeah and i and i think this is this might be one of the most interesting questions kid actually because for me, this started way back when I was working on my master's and my doctorate work and wanting something that would allow me to take notes and process PDFs and read journal articles and do all of these things. And I tried the Kindle, I tried the Nook, and those are both phenomenal devices for reading, but they didn't work for what I needed them to do. And it wasn't the device's fault. It was my expectation of what I thought the device should do. And so three years ago, when I went into this again, and I started looking at different devices, and I had seen a remarkable in person, someone from our uh, IT managed service provider had one, and I'm like, this is super cool. And I dove in and I was like, I'm going to absorb as much content as I can and figure out the best way to, to use this. And it it really, it was watching you, it was watching Voya, it was watching Brandon, it was watching a bunch of people compare these devices. And I wanted something that wasn't quite as cut off from the world as the Remarkable, but wasn't as far towards a tablet as books that kind of fit in that middle space. And I purchased the SuperNote and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. There were no surprises. Everything that's enhanced since, and that's not being dramatic, it has evolved to the point of adding so many features that I didn't even know I needed that I really feel that I don't regret the choice at all. Mm -hmm. And I've been watching just a little bit. I've been starting to watch uh, uh, Marquez Brown Lee and he says, buy the tech for what it is, not what it promises in the future. And that's a yeah. rough paraphrase, but I couldn't agree more. I think that's, I bought it for the device it was. It did exactly what it said it would do. And it still does all of that and all of these other new cool things. If you're looking for the device, find the one that fits exactly what you want to be able to do. And then another question for you, Ed, from Jennifer is, uh, do you have experience with books? And just curious, I mean, I guess you kind of, you've told us why you, you uh, not um ruled them out entirely of the of the but for you and your use case you decided not to go with those so um yeah tell us do you have any experience with this yeah and i and i don't jennifer and i think that's a great question and i don't mm. primarily for the reason that i'm very intentional about what i pick to mm. bring into my orbit and the things that i want to use and i have my phone if i want to access apps i have my computer so i do a lot of switching so if yeah. I'm working in Excel, for example, I'm not going to do that on a small device. I'm going to move over to my computer. 
I think they're phenomenal devices. I think they're they're elegant. Uh, it just doesn't fit what I want to do on that type of device. Um, and real quick, just on the paper field mm. kit, because I think you're right. This is leaps and bounds above when I used to write on an iPad with a stylus. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually am one of those people that doesn't like paper on a flat surface. I like add of paper. Yeah. And the super note for what it is feels more like that experience of a pen on yeah. a pad of paper. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, it's for people who like that writing feel who like their ballpoint pens or their fountain pens. And they like the, the, the pad of paper type of feel. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I, I watch a lot of Marquez as well. And, uh, he, he really does get it right with what people are thinking, doesn't he? And um, he says, yeah, buy it on what it is now rather than what it's promised. But the, the, the know, knowing that, uh, the knowledge that you're buying into a device where people do listen, where they listen to your feedback and they act on that, or at the very least they respond and say why it doesn't fit with what they're going for. And many people say, well, why can't we have one with a front light? Well, they say, well, this is why we haven't put a front light in. My use case has changed tremendously over time originally it was mostly for being able to have quick meeting notes and annotate pdfs that was pretty much what i wanted it to do but now that you can open links directly and i should preface this there are some beta features coming and that i am already playing around with that make the use case for this even broader than what mm -hmm. i did originally so it did all of the stuff which was quick note taking but then they added the links function both internal and external, and that's in the current platform. Um, they enhanced the calendar. You know, all of those things really made it that much better for me. Um, and things I didn't know I needed. That's always my favorite part of this is to say, I love this thing because I didn't know I need it. Now it's there, and I can't imagine not having it.